Um, this is a hosting event 101. My name is Curran Lyles. I'm the director for the University Center Administration. Uh, I'm going to be assisted by Ms. Sheila Filbert, who also was part of the University Center Administration. And again, this is hosting event 101. These are the learning objectives. Basically articulate the uh, room reservation policies and procedures. Uh, we'll familiarize you with the procedures for executing and managing a successful meeting. And you'll learn a little bit about the uh, events board, um, the university's events board. Okay, so let me first kind of uh, explain to you what the university events board is, okay? Um, and we'll go there. Um, first, it meets weekly to review events uh, for perceived and potential risks involved in said events. Okay, a lot of times you plan programs, different things like that, different activities, and you're not thinking about the risk that could be involved in this. You know, if there's, you know, God forbid a riot or something like that that's on campus. We need to start thinking about those. So that's what the events board does. Um, we think about what it is and what type of risk your events or activities that you're planning might have to the university community, okay? Uh, we also look to make sure that similar programs aren't being planned for the same date and location. All right, easy enough. Uh, we also make sure that programs are in compliance with all state, federal, and local laws, university rules, and the educational mission of the institution. Some of you are new, but then we have some veterans in here. Your student groups are required to have a constitution. Is that correct? Yes? How many have you seen your student group's constitution? Okay. Next question. How many of you, when you're planning your programs, are planning your programs based off of your student group's constitution, well, your student group's mission? Some of you. All your student groups should have also a mission, which tells us and tells anybody else what it is that you do. Uh, last semester, the events board approved over 250 events. Last semester alone, spring semester 2012, we approved over 2,000, uh, I'm sorry, 250 events. That's a big number. It's a good number because what it tells me is that these student groups are actually planning events, right? It says that you guys are planning events and sometimes multiple events. That's a good thing. The more events that are being planned, the more events that are being done, is the more activities that the student, the student body has to attend, right? So that 250, it's, it's a lot for us, but it's a good thing. And that's how I look at it. Uh, the Events Board Committee is a collective body of senior level professional staff members that formulate general and specific policies to guide Kane University officers and programming committees, to advise Kane University resource areas, and to review and approve all of the student group slash organization activities using the facilitator university model. Basically, that facilitator university model is basically that we work in collaboration with you. We work in collaboration with you to plan and help you plan your programs. We don't tell you what programs to do, but we, also, we, we work with you and try to assist you to make your programs a little bit better. So that's basically what that facilitator model is about. Uh, this is a list of who composes the committee, the events board committee. I happen to chair that committee, but as you can see, we have representatives from a few different areas on campus, University Center Administration, Center for Leadership and Service, also with the Greeks, which is also part of the Center for Leadership and Service. We have Office of Student Government, Conference and Event Planning, Office of Re Residential Services, Student Services, Theater Management, Campus Police, okay? Most of these areas have people that do a lot of big time programming. Funded groups come out of the um, Office of Student Government. A lot of people, a lot of funded groups. Non-funded groups, even larger. Non-funded groups comes out of the Center for Leadership and Service. The Greeks, another large entity. We need to make sure that we have representatives from each one of those areas to help us to put their voice in on these programs that are going on. Obviously Campus Police is going to be there to make sure that, you know, that they know what's going on, that we can make sure that we have enough officers there to make sure that we keep the community safe. Theater management is there because events happen in Wilkins Theater, also in the Little Theater, also at Downs Hall. So 
there's areas all over this campus um, that has some type of input. So it's just not University Center Administration, it's just not Kern Lyles making decisions based off of these programs. The events board shall operate in accordance with the rules, procedures, and administrative direction of Kane University through the University Center Administration Director, that's me, through the auspices of the Vice President of Student Affairs. And so, what we do in the events board is chaired by me, but it goes through the Office of Student Affairs, okay? And obviously, the Vice President of Student Affairs, who is Janice Murray Lowry. That's who we report to. Some guiding boundaries. Student groups and organizations operate within a larger picture of Kane University's mission and core values representing the university and its goals, okay? Student groups and organizations must comply with all local, state, and federal laws during organizational activities or events, whether on or off campus. That's key. Not just on campus. If you're planning events on campus, uh, do you need to abide by these policies? But when you go off campus, you still represent the university if you're taking a group to the theater, to the Broadway show, or you're taking someone to Six Flags. Um, you're still a student group. You still represent the university. All right. So you still need to abide by the policies and procedures. And again, student groups and organizations are governed by the Student Code of Conduct of the University and the Kane University Reservations Manual and the University as well. Um, that information is posted. The Reservations Manual is posted on the website. Uh, student groups and organizations are also governed by the policies of the Center for Leadership and Service available in the Student Group Toolkit. Student leaders are expected to familiarize themselves with this toolkit and use it as a reference tool when planning their events and activities. That toolkit is on the Center for Leadership and Services website. You don't need to memorize it, but it's there as a reference for you. It's a reference tool. Definitely make sure you're looking for it. Make sure you take a look at it. It will help you in your planning of your events. Lastly, finally, student groups and organizations create their own rules, which we kind of talked about. Each organization submits a, a constitution with its internal policies and structure, okay? Groups that are affiliated with any local, national, or international groups, organizations, may have guidelines from those as well. We strongly encourage student groups and organizations to develop operations manuals and suggestions for content can be found in the Student Group Toolkit, again, on the Center for Leadership and Service website. All right, so, the benefit from you all is that most of you have not planned an event. Um, most of you are new to your organizations, and that's a good thing. Um, for those that have done that in the past, we have a new event planning process that we're implementing and it will be implemented during the summer. All right? So, this might be new for some of you, or different for some of you, I should say. An event host of the recognized student group or organization will submit a concept program proposal form on Google Link, outlining a general layout of the program they would like to implement. Concept. You guys meet in whatever meeting you have, an executive board meeting, in your, your, your group meeting, and you decide that we want to do whatever program it is. Let's say for the sake of this workshop, it'd be um, a safe sex workshop, okay? It's a safe sex workshop. You need to have submit, you need to submit that paperwork saying basically, this is something that we're interested in doing. We want to have a safe sex workshop, um, and these are some of the dates that we want to do it, okay? You need to submit that through um, Google Link to the director, whether that's in student, or, student government, Center for Leadership and Service, or Alex. They'll review that and say, okay, this looks like an event that it looks good. I don't, I don't foresee any issues with it. I'm going to bring this, and I'm going to approve it. I'm going to bring this to the events board's attention. Next, you'll, what you'll do is you'll submit that entire packet that you that you've collected uh, to the events board and says, you know, we've already approved our concept. Now, this is we've done all the legwork. This is all the paperwork that is needed. The security agreements. This is the reservation that we've done. This is the date that we want to do it. These are all the things that we want to do. Here you go. The events board will now re review that again. Make sure there's no perceived risk. Make sure all of your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. Make sure everything has been filled out, completed and then they'll go ahead and approve that, okay? It'll, be, it'll go ahead and get approved. You like send, you'll get an email notification, okay? 
once your event has been planned, it's been approved by your concept approval and your regular approval, the date has been set, you're good to go, you've done your reservation, you've let us know, the University Center Administration Office know, this is the room that I want, this is the setup I want, let's say it's in here, this is considered lecture style, okay? Now you're in your, off, your office or your student group and you're, you're talking. This is the day before, you're going over your checklist. We need to have this, we need to have this, we need to have this. It's like, whoa, we might need to change the setup of the room. So now you're going from lecture style, you wanna to go to classroom style, okay? You need to let us know, or our office know, uh, more than 24 hours in advance. I would say at least 48 hours in advance. If your program is at 3 p.m., Please don't come into our office at 12 noon saying, we have a program today, we wanna to change the setup. Okay? We need to know at least 48 hours in advance. Please don't come the day of or the day before saying we wanna change the setup. Because we have forms, we have everything printed out. Our staff already know what their assignments are and they'll go and start doing setups and stuff like that. And sometimes we'll do setups, you know, a day in advance, two days in advance, as long as no one's in the room. And so, let us know. Give us the courtesy of letting us know in advance if you need to make any changes to your setups. Okay, so, we kind of talked about the event planning process a little bit, the new one. There are three programs. There are three program types that we're gonna talk about. Okay? Major programs, regular programs, and then meetings. All right, those are the categories that we have. Can anybody kind of give me an idea of what you think a major program would be considered? Or what we would consider a major program? Campus awareness, absolutely. A conference, yes. Somebody else had their hand up, I saw three hands. Okay, campus awareness is a major program, trust me, my office plans that one. <laughs> major. This is what major, this is what a major event is, this is how it's defined. Uh, it's defined but not limited to events that have a total budget of over $2,000. That's including food, entertainment, professional service, security, maintenance, etc. Includes 200 or more people, including the entertainment, uh, and takes place in the following locations. Wilkins Theater, Downs Hall, Harwood Arena, and or Exterior University grounds. That's what we, that's how we define a major event. Okay. Now I purposely didn't read a particular portion right here. These events must be fully approved by the events board at least one month in advance of the program. These events must be fully approved at least one month in advance of the program. So, if you're planning a major event, a conference or something like that, that means you would have had to submit your concept approval and have it approved. You would have had to do the legwork and submitted your regular approval and have that approved by events board at least one month in advance of your event. And so we've, we've done a timeline. If this is your event, this is the date of your event, and you gotta do all the lake work, you gotta do the concept approval, you have to submit that to the events board that meets once a week, um, then you have to do you know, you get that approved and you have to do a regular proposal and you have to submit that back to the events board that meets once a week, all right? Then you have to do all your planning and your advertising and all that stuff. If this is a major event, this is at minimum, it should take you at least six weeks to plan said major event. Minimum, at least six weeks, okay, for a major event. Regular program is defined as programs with less than 200 people with possibility of bringing uh, in a guest speaker or a faculty member, workshops, trainings, etc., and taking place in the University Center, Center for uh, Maxine, well, Maxine and Jack Lane Center, which is a CAS, uh, and other academic buildings throughout the King University campuses. That's what we would consider a regular program. Now here it says these events must be fully approved by the events board at least five business days in advance of the program. So, if you're doing an external speaker, and this is your end date, minimum, it would probably take you about five weeks to actually plan your event from start to finish. That's with the concept approval, 
that's with the regular approval, that's with all the legwork, the reservations, and so on and so forth, regular event. We're not going to bring in an external speaker. We're not bringing an internal speaker. Our group, we got this. We've gathered the information on our own, and we're going to do it ourselves. Concept proposal, regular proposal, the legwork, the advertising, minimum at least three weeks. And then meetings. These are your traditional meetings, you know, your executive board meetings, your chapter meetings, just a regular meeting. At least 72 hours in advance to reserve that. It doesn't need to go through the events board because this is just a regular meeting where you're going to be planning. This is like your planning meetings. All right. Give you some tips for planning a, a, a successful program. Here's a few tips for you. I've learned from experience. Make sure you're not planning a similar program or make sure you're not planning similar programs on the same days. Okay? Secondly, uh, don't plan a program on the same day as a major program. Comedy show, a party, you know, a major conference or something like that, a concert. It's not going to work. Make sure your advisor is aware of the program date and time. If you are having a major program or a, a regular program, external, internal speaker, you need to have an advisor present for at least the first two hours. Your advisor signs the paperwork, they see the paperwork, so they're aware of it. You need to make sure that they're aware of it. You need to keep reminding them, okay? Make sure you submit your paperwork within the required time frames. Make sure you submit your paperwork within the required time frames. You don't get nothing else out of this. I'd hate to deny an event that's very creative, that you guys are putting a lot of time and effort in because you submitted it late. So if you wanna go outside of the university because maybe it's cheaper, maybe they have better food outside the university and you really like this, this restaurant or caterer or whatever the case may be, you need to get a food waiver signed by Gourmet Dining. Gourmet Dining does sign them, so don't think that they're just gonna say no. Um, briefly, uh, cancellation forms. If you've done everything you needed to do, you've reserved your space, and all of a sudden your group decides, we don't wanna do this. We don't wanna have this program. Um, yeah, I don't feel comfortable with it, whatever the case may be, but it's already been reserved. You need to make sure that you let us know, the University Center Administration know, especially if it's in this building, that we are canceling this event. If you're gonna be Wilkins Theater, you're gonna be in Downs Hall, and you're going to be selling tickets for your event, all right? Or not even selling them, but you're gonna be giving out tickets for your event. People are gonna be required to go to Wilkins Theater box office and pick up tickets for your event. You're gonna to need to pick up a ticket form, a theater form, you know, for tickets. You'll need to make sure you fill that out. Are all these forms uh, available on Coogalink? Yes, they will be all available. Or, or Coogalink or on the University Center Administration website. Any other questions?